Well, the conclave begins Tuesday. 115 cardinals to vote inside the Sistine Chapel. Conclaves in the past century have averaged between two and five days, and only then do we get a new pope. The Wall Street Journal's John Stoll joins us now from Rome on the phone. Thanks for being there, John. Hey, Simon. Thanks for having me. So, um, what is the mood like in Rome now as the, uh, the cardinals are all there? What is it feeling? I, I think there's a lot of open-ended question uh, sort of environment going on right now. I think if you look at the uh, the field, it's it's pretty wide open uh, right now, as opposed to maybe eight years ago, where most people thought that the, 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 the odds the odds were right on you know Joseph Ratzinger, the cardinal at the time, to be the next pope. It turned out to be that way. It's anything but a, a sure bet at this point that any one of the 115 uh, cardinals is going to be pope. Now. What are the issues that are going to decide who is the new pope? Because clearly there are a lot of things facing the, the Catholic Church at the moment. Well, there are, there are a lot of things at play. I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is, is that, you know, eight years ago it was really about continuity. This time it's more about governance. And the issue of here in, at, at the Vatican, for instance, you know, this latest uh, scandal with uh, uh, Vatty leaks and, and, and the uh, implications that there was a lot of infighting and, and, and a misuse of money. And, and obviously in the United States and, and in other strongholds, there's been the whole issue of, of the sexual abuse. So it's the ability to turn that conversation back around and, and, and sort of clean up, uh, if you will, the Vatican, but also to communicate to a wider audience that is outside of North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Latin America, be able to, you know, speak in uh, very clear and uh, uh, crisp terms of, of what the message of Catholicism is going forward. Now, to John, tra traditionally, um, popes have not come from a Africa or Latin America. Is that likely to change this time, or is there a chance it will? Well, I, well the, the, the big names that we're hearing right now uh, tend to be uh, European or North American, but there's a lot of speculation there right now that somebody like Peter Turks from, from Ghana, somebody from Latin America, somebody else even from, from Asia could be uh, placed as, as the next pope. And, and, and the reason this is is because the demographic has so radically changed uh, in, in, in recent decades toward these, if you will, more emerging markets for the Catholic Church away from places like Europe and North America. There are more cardinals from those places voting in the last two conclaves, this one and the last one. So the tides could change in that direction. We'll have to wait and see. Now, now John, um, in previous pope pickings, basically for the last 600 y years, there's also been a funeral at the same time. Does that change the mood in the city? Well, I think it definitely has. I think the, the issue has been, you know, you've got a, an absence of mourning. Uh, last uh, eight years ago, uh, John Paul uh, II had died, and it led to millions of people coming to uh, Rome to mourn the loss of a, of a very lo uh, well-loved pope. This time you have a resignation, so you don't have that sort of period of mourning. He's gone off into the sunset. It's been a month since he, you know, first said he was going to resign, and he's been off, off the stage for a while. So that's led to an, a, a real... Uh, uh, a litany of, of speculation, uh, both from the casual standpoint, but also very serious speculation here in Rome in terms of who's jockeying for, for position, uh, what the right direction is going to go. And it's definitely dominated the headlines here in Italy. And then we've also seen that obviously globally at this point with a lot of speculation coming in from Canada, North America, yeah. uh, Latin America. Yeah. Okay. Great, great stuff. Thank you very much, John Stoll of the Wall Street Journal. And we will have continuing coverage of the Papal Conclave right here on WSJ Live and WSJ.com, so keep it here.